a smart pump, or you have a smart device connected to a pump, okay? And let's say that smart device is generating information for you in real time about that pump down to the pump's volumetric efficiency, or its efficiency, hypothetically, or in reality, coming out of the case drain of an axial piston pump. That's what this specific model is about here. And so if you, uh, you know, say manufacturer recommends that at any given time, you should be at an 85% VE or higher coming out of the case drain of an axial piston pump, right? That is really important information for you to know when it comes to the overall work and efficiency that your pump is trying to get to you. But it's really hard to actually get that information available without having and deploying some type of real-time connected interface to go along with that. So we'll run a scenario that now that that reality is possible on how even a single data point can drive a lot of macro efficiency effects across an organization and an ecosystem. So let's say you suddenly, one of your pumps is starts to trend at a 78% VE out of the case rate. So now you're operating at seven points uh, below you know, what the manufacturer recommends. And with today's IoT, you're gonna get an alarm or a notification about that. And so now you're gonna have this information that says, wow, I'm operating below efficiency right now. And we all know that production is not easy, production is hard, um, whatever, in whatever capacity that you're in. Uh, and you have demands on you to make sure that that pump can do the work that it's set out to do. That you likely have money tied into that pump being able to do its work. And so now that you understand that it's operating below efficiency, you've got to start thinking about some decisions that you need to make. Are you still satisfied with the level of production that needs to happen from that piece of equipment today? So you can start to change production decisions in real time. But as I get to that bottom base of the triangle there, so you know, first step, you're getting that single piece of information on a smartphone, on a sexy dashboard, and somewhere in a facility, on a tablet, if you're on vacation in Fiji and you get jacked out by understanding how your equipment is doing, great. You're gonna get it, you're gonna get it there too. I don't recommend that. Um, but so you, you have this piece of information here now, right? And so what do you do with it, right? Because I think what's really important to take away from this is how you use the data or else you're going to get a lot of so what's from your customers. So what that you're giving me this piece of information? What are we doing? And so again, on this single piece of information, well, I can go back now historically and think, oh, it's interesting, I wonder what's causing this efficiency dip in my pump. We come from, uh, you know, we, we come from a background that's more lubrication focused. So our first stop is always the stories in the oil. Start with the oil. How's the fluid condition? How, how is that changed? And so it's an immediate branch from a very specific piece of monitoring to a systemic piece of monitoring, right? And so how am I now seeing my overall fluid health and is it in the right condition? What's my contaminant levels like? Uh, what's my conductivity? Is my permittivity tracking right? My additive packages, where they should be with this. Is that what's driving that down? So immediately, you have something to do with that data. You're not just staring at it for nothing to do. You have an immediate baked in action, okay? And then so let's say, you do, and you can deploy whatever it is to deploy services products to help clean that oil. But it doesn't stop there, because now, if you're on the production side or fleet management or whatever it could be, you can actually start making more operational decisions, right? Well, am I having the same issue across my plant? And so now you can take that piece, that, that 78% VE, and if you're looking at the same data across a whole fleet of pumps, now you can sort of say, well, how is this comparing fleet one? Is this, a, is this a fleet wide issue across my plant or is this locked into here? So now you've gone from an asset specific to a systemic type of look at the fluid quality to now you're in full asset, full production system wide. So you're, you're getting more and more higher up in the vision and the strategic decisions that you're making again with just a single point of data. And it gets even bigger than that. So let's say it goes beyond you at this point. So your corner office at your facility and now we're starting to wonder, well, you know, if you're in a multinational type of organization, well, why is production down in Guadalajara versus Munich or something like that? And so now it's someone on a corporate level, now they're starting to look at, well, why is my overall pump efficiency down in my production practices? And I'm not making that up because I've heard that in real time from a large plastic injection molding customer that we're working with. They had 44 sites worldwide, and their number one problem organizationally, more than talent, more than finances and all that was pump failure. You've got to be kidding me that if your biggest organizational problem worldwide is pump failure, that 
good for them because I think that's solvable. But man, there's a lot of problems that you can have. That must be pretty intense for them. Because we all know how important pumps are. And so how they would do it, it was literally like the Pump Avengers would meet once a week. They would have a weekly standing meeting, video conference. What are your pumps doing in your facilities? And what are your pumps doing in your facilities? I mean, you want to talk about like grossly inefficient waste of people's time. This is like happening in real time, like multi-billion dollar like plastics injection molding place. And they're literally going around being like, what are you learning? What are you doing? All that stuff can go away if someone's just sitting in a corner office looking at real-time data. They can now say, okay, well, I see what they're doing now and what this is doing, and they can use all that to now make company-wide decisions. And so again, we're still, all this started from a singular piece of efficiency data at this point. And then we ultimately get to the very top of the pyramid, which gets us to an interesting piece of monetization as well. Because inside the organization, it may not be the only people that care or want to see that data. And we can, we can have data governance conversations at the side or whatever that needs to be to track with me in this scenario. What if it's actually the pump? The actual, the pump itself? Should the OEM of that pump, should the manufacturer of that pump know that it's just not quite working as it should be in the application environment that it's in? And so what we see with the IoT is the more that we generate that information back to the OEMs, long term they can continue to engineer out why the stuff fails in the first place. Because especially if we're in a manufacturing environment where we are an OEM and we make equipment for the field, my background, I come from it, we spend infinite resources and time in controlled lab environments to get products exactly how we want them, to then send them out to the bottom west. It literally makes no logical sense. I mean, at this point, how much time and effort we spend to perfect and then send it out into just complete chaos in an operational environment. And they just don't do a good job. We just don't do a good job of actually getting out into the field and understanding how our equipment works in the highly varied environment of traditional off-highway or factory floor level stuff. And so the more that we can generate that post-installation information back to them, the smarter they're gonna be around how their products work inside of them. The same if you have, if you have or if you are in the service supplier distribution field. Because honestly, like I can tell you that maybe the stats are getting cut and production increases are going up. So people are being asked to do more with less constantly. And so people are going to be looking for co-pilots and companies to come alongside them. And if you have access to this information, it's the old Watson commercial with the elevator, right? Where you show up at the front desk, and the front desk person's like, why are you here? You're like, your pump's about to blow. And you're like, oh. And then you solve that problem before it's about to happen. So there's a lot of ways at the very tip top of that pyramid to inject and sit side by side with customers. Uh, it's, it almost reminds me of a rally card. If anyone follows rally cards in here, the props are more on the co-pilot, who's actually telling the people when to turn, not the actual driver. I mean, kudos to the driver, but you know, someone's out there saying, hey, hard turn, hairpin coming in you know, a mile, mile and a half, whatever that is. Customers are desperately looking for that right now. And I mean that to my little team opened up a consulting division last year because of how many companies would be like, we don't know how to do IoT. So if you are in a spot where you can come alongside companies, they're asking for it right now, I promise you that. So that's in short of how to feel.